Hi there everyone and welcome to Tech Travers. I'm back again and this time it's something a little different from the handhelds I've been playing around with the last couple of months and that is this awesome little mini PC from Trigkey. Now you might have seen a few of these before from B-Link and Minis Forum among others but Trigkey is a pretty new competitor in the market as they were founded in 2021 promising to bring more cost effective products for its customers. The Trigkey S3 that you see here comes with a Ryzen 5 CPU and Radeon Vega A. GPU, but more about the specs a little further in. I will test both some AAA gaming as well as some emulation and give my overall thoughts whether you should consider this mini PC or not. Let's jump into it. The Trigkey S3 comes packed with a small user manual containing all the information you need on how to set it up for the first time. And in this little side box we get our accessories, which is a HDMI cable for image output, a handy little mount if you want to mount your mini PC straight to the back of your monitor using Visa standards, or to a wall or basically any other thing you might want to mount it to. You also get a power adapter and since I live in Europe I've got the EU standard plug. The only thing I don't like about this adapter is how short the cable is. You also get a very short HDMI cable for those of you who are thinking about mounting this directly to your monitor's back. And of course you get screws for the mount. On the front we get a set of USB ports. There are two USB 3.0 ports and one data only USB Type-C port. Next to the Type-C we have a headphone jack and on the left side we also have a Type-C the RTC key which is going to help clear your CMOS should you need that. We also get the on off button to the right which lights up when you are plugged in. And on both sides of the small case we have some ventilation grills. Moving on to the back we have an expansion area on the top to let air out since there is a fan inside that's gonna extract any sort of heat that builds up inside. We also have a gigabit ethernet to the left as well as another set of USB 3.0 ports. Next to the USB ports we have two HDMI 4K HD ports as well as the power adapter input. On the bottom we get four screws which keeps this case together and if you undo them we can reach the internals of this little machine. In here we have our hard drive or SSD slot and we can actually put a SSD with a maximum of 2TB which means you get plenty of storage for all of your games and data. We also have 16GB of crucial DDR4 RAM which can be upgraded to a maximum of 32GB. We have a Kingston NVMe SSD drive with 512 gigs. It's a 2280 model which should give you around 1900 MBS which means you should get fast read and write speeds while using your computer. It does have Bluetooth 4.0 and Wi-Fi 5 on here, meaning you can connect headphones, game controllers or other wireless devices natively. And the fan I was talking about before is located underneath all of this. Now before we move on to some gameplay videos, let's go through the specs more thoroughly. It has a Ryzen 5 3550H with max turbo frequency up to 3.7GHz, Radeon Vega 8 graphics which supports dual screens, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, 512GB of internal storage, 4 USB 3.0 ports, a USB Type-C for data only, Bluetooth 4.0 and Wi-Fi 5 for wireless connectivity, a gigabit Ethernet port and and the headphone jack. Trigkey S3 comes with Windows 11 64-bit pre-installed, so once you've finished unboxing you can just hook it up to a monitor of your choice and turn it on, and the streamlined installation process will begin. I should probably mention that you can install pretty much any operating system you want on here, but Windows 11 is, as I said, pre-installed. Okay, so let's move on to some of the benchmarks. First off, we have Geekbench 5, which I will use to benchmark the CPU. And this is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna skip this part. And let's take a look at the results. Single core was 636 and multi-core was 2473. For a small device as this, it's pretty impressive. For the compute benchmark or GPU benchmark, I'm choosing Vulkan as the API. I had no thermal throttles while doing the tests, by the way. The GPU temp stayed around 70 degrees, which is pretty good. And as you can see, the score landed on 9927, which is actually a bit better than I expected after seeing some other tests of this little device. Now, of course, those numbers doesn't mean much if you don't know what it means in practicality, so let's try out some games. 
Here is Bioshock from the Bioshock collection on Steam, played in 1080p, and for your convenience you can see the numbers in the left corner. And even if this game doesn't run in capped 60fps, the gameplay experience is really great, and to be honest I'm not sure I would even notice the fps dips if I didn't see the numbers on the screen. Another game that runs perfectly on this mini PC is Grand Theft Auto V. And yes, while both of these games are pretty old by now, they are still very popular and loved by many, so I think there are many of you out there who will appreciate them being playable. Oh, fuck, you hear that? Siren! <coughs> fuck the cops! T, hit the shutter switch! What's this? Local resistance? It ain't supposed to go down like this! It never is! Come on! Go! Don't be an idiot! Get out of the way or suffer the consequence! I ain't laying down for them! Get out of here! Back the fuck down! Dumb fucking cop! And for the last PC game I'm testing in this video, it's the remaster of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This game is running in 1080p with all settings set to low. And even if it doesn't stay at a locked 30 FPS, I still want to say that this game is very playable. It's gonna come down to how picky you are. I want to mention that I did test both God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn and even Stray for a more modern lineup of games, but it wasn't really an enjoyable experience. So for those of you hoping to play new AAA games, you might want to look further. For emulation on the other hand, this is where the device gets to chime. The Dolphin emulator runs amazing and most of your games up to GameCube and Nintendo Wii will run great. Here I am playing one of my childhood favorites, Luigi's Mansion on the Nintendo GameCube. I play it without any tweaks to the settings and it runs great as you can see. And here I am playing Super Mario Sunshine for the Nintendo GameCube as well. The cutscenes in this game looks a bit tearing, but it can probably be fixed in the settings. I am playing this out of the box after all. <laughs> The last GameCube game I want to show you is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and I'm happy to announce that this masterpiece runs at a locked 30 FPS as well and it will be a great experience on the Trig Key S3 Mini PC. The last game I want to show you running on this system is God of War Chains of Olympus running on the PSP using the so popular PPSSPP emulator. The reason I show you this game in particular is, as so many have pointed out before me, if a system can run this game, it can probably run any other PSP game as well. Apart from a few barely noticeable stutters, this game will run great on here. So yeah, pretty impressive performance for something so small. Many of you are of course wondering what a device like this costs and where to get it. The TrigKey S3 Mini PC costs $3.99 and you can purchase it through TrigKey's website. As usual, I will of course leave a link in the description and it's a non-affiliated one by the way, so I won't get a single penny if you choose to buy one. 
And that's been it for this mini PC review. I hope it helped you decide whether you should get one for yourself. If it did or if you liked the video, please show it by giving it a thumbs up or a comment. If you want more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel as it really helps out, probably more than you think. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.